Hey, everybody. I am joined here today by Jason Grillo. Uh, as you know, Jason is a, a major component of Airminers. He is our operations and partnerships director. Uh, and he is uh, today here to talk about uh, how Airminers events specifically uh, can help you build something in carbon removal. He's been doing uh, he's been the lead of all the Airminers events since the since the beginning. It's the first conference. And so I'm thrilled to have Jason here. Hey, Jason. Hey, Tito. It's good to see you. It's been hey, ages. Good to see you. Right? <laughs> Freaking podcast now. Um, so yeah, to, to kick us off, like um, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, doing a new Air Miners event, uh, what kind of what kind of events uh, are you are you looking for when you're first when you're first thinking about this? Yeah, so in, in general, we want to have something that's like, useful for the community so that like like I said so people can take what they learn and kind of build from that we want to have something that features diverse perspectives you know because it's, it's going to take so many different kinds of people to to work on carbon removal solutions um when when I sit down and say okay we got a date that we want to have an event at okay great uh usually it's Wednesdays but first thing we first thing I've been doing lately that's been really useful is to go to the community or you know figure out what has been percolating in the community discussion in air miners or elsewhere sometimes it's as explicit as putting out a poll saying hey folks what do you want to learn about in air mining or in in carbon removal because we've got an open slot coming up for a panel event and the answers are really, really interesting when when, when we get them. I mean, that's why uh, that's that's why we did uh, our MRV event in August. That you know had like, I mean, seriously, we blew the doors off of the previous registration record for just a single standalone event. The conferences are a whole different animal. Just understand that. But uh, the but but for a single standalone panel event, yeah, we had almost 500 people sign up, which was like wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, so that was like far and away above what we'd ever gotten before. So okay, we're on to something here. Wow. Um, yeah. And that's when we just thought that okay, well, why don't we just take that and kind of put different wrinkles on it because there's so many different wrinkles to MRV. How about soil MRV, like we did on Wednesday this past Wednesday? Uh, why not do something on uh, DAC to mineralization MRV, which is which is going to come up in a you know week or two now. Uh, we got plans for other different carbon removal methods and different or different MRV for different carbon removal methods as a standalone panel event because each is so nuanced that we could probably you know spend quite a few, quite a lot of time on each of those topics and not get exhausted with all the different ways of approaching monitoring, reporting, and verification. So anyway. That's an example of stuff that we learn when we just ask when we ask our community, and it's a great way of, for one thing, making sure that we hit on the on the topic that's relevant for people, but also um, giving people a sense that you know what they they're they're part of this. We're all part of this. We're all part of Airminers. We're all part of the community, and everyone has a way of influencing the direction of how things work. Yeah, you said something about like a, a diversity of different people of different concepts. Can you talk more about like why is that why is that important in carbon removal in in 2022 so one thing people uh sometimes notice uh is is we don't do like a, a presentation we don't have like one person come up and do a bunch of slides and so you mentioned you know, diversity of different people coming together can you talk more about why like why is that important what's what's valuable about that yeah 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 i mean Again, we, we, we're a community of innovators, and innovator can mean any one of a number of things. You can have an innovative uh, technical idea, you can have an innovative business model, you can have an innovative uh, artistic design that really explains the concept that you're projecting really well. Uh, so, it, you know, all these different skill sets are necessary to include in the mix because it's going to take people with all different kinds of uh, uh, talents to contribute to making an effective carbon removal solution. So uh, that's when, when we talk about diversity of, of experiences, diversity of skill sets. That's really what, what, what I'm talking about. That it's uh, it's it's going to be a, a cross fun. It's going to be um, kind of cross functional when you when you think of a, a solution that has to be made 
you know, how are you going to design it? How are you going to make it sure that it meets the customer's needs? It's not you know, the technical aspects of it are extraordinarily important, but they're not the be all end all. And how can we get people involved to speak to each of those? Neat. Yeah, it's good to hear that from your perspective. Um, I'm thinking about events and like one of the, the, the key metric that we keep track of for events is how many people you know, post a question or post a response in the, in the Zoom chat. So it's really about people being engaged. Can you talk about that? Like what's the, what's the Q&A sessions like at an at a Airminers event and, and why are they there? Yeah, so we, we always build in a Q&A session because again, we want people to have an audience experience that's really engaging. Um, that's one of the reasons, by the way, why we have them in Zoom meetings, uh, not Zoom webinars typically. You know, on, a, on, a, on, on, on rare occasions, we will do a Zoom webinar, but for, for meetings, uh, for, for the regular events, most of the time, it's just a, like being in a typical Zoom chat that happens to have like 125, 150 people on it uh, so that people can have a closer relationship with the people who are doing the presenting. That, that, that's why I ask people to just come up and mute themselves and ask their own question in their own words. Um, How much time do you do you spend on um, what's the balance for for Q and A oh, versus it, like discussion? About twenty stuff. minutes, fifteen twenty minutes or so. Yeah. You know, we you know that that's that that's as, that's what we have, and then after that, we usually release the or with the panel's permission, we give them their email address. Or we give the email addresses of the panelists to the audience so that they can ask questions later on. Because invariably, look, we have so many questions we can never get to them in time for the panel to be over about by the time the panel ends so uh, we want to again ensure that this is as permeable a space as possible because you know what we're still early days and you, people are not that many degrees removed from a, a major thought uh, from major thought leaders major major organizational leaders and we want to just emphasize that that the ability to still, again, to influence and to have an audience with people is still, it's still very, very open right now. Yeah, you have this phrase you say a lot, which is the people, uh, people going from knowing of others to yeah. uh, actually knowing them. How's that? How's that holding up? It, pretty well. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why we did the networking at the end. So that people, Again, the semantics matter. Like, if you know, if you say you know someone, that means you have an authentic sense of getting to know who who that person really is, and rather than just saying you know of someone. Well, I've heard about them, and they're kind of floating around, and yeah, you know, we definitely want to have people know each other. And in in this environment, again, when we have let's see, at, at the at the time of this recording, we have almost eighteen hundred people in. In the in our main Slack community, that still that that's still small enough where people can can know each other and know each other really well because everyone's so disparate and far flung. It's you know it's from the West Coast to the U.S. to the East Coast to Europe, Asia, Africa, India, Latin America, um, you know all sorts of all, all sorts of places, making inroads into Australia, New Zealand as well. Yep, or all around the world. Carbon carbon dioxide is distributed evenly throughout the atmosphere. Uh, <laughs> one of the one of the benefits of of the environment. Um, how about so? So there's a lot of people that are that are you know they're wanting to build solutions. They're wanting to make sure we don't we don't break the they break the environment. Uh, do you have any advice for somebody if if they're interested in building something in carbon removal? What you know? What's what's useful about events, or what's valuable at events for for somebody that's really wanting to to build something? Yeah, I mean, you really as a, as a kind of building on what I, building on what I talked about earlier that you have the ability to really get to know key opinion leaders who are very likely going to just respond to your email or and and an outreach off the cuff to say that you're interested in what they're working on and that you'd like to get to know their subject matter a little bit better and hear some questions I have based on what your comments at an, an, an event. And just to take that and run with it and you know create something with it. The networking events too at the end are really uh, well well received. Uh, you know we have people who just get to know get to know one another well and have the subject matter of something that all communally just witnessed 
as a starting point of what hopefully will be a fruitful conversation. Neat. Well, any, any perspective for somebody that's like, um, you know, that's, I'm always getting these emails about events, but I'm like really busy on one thing. Do you have any advice for somebody like that? That's, you know, kind of seeing these things whiz by every, every two weeks, what would be your advice uh, to somebody like that in terms of, um, you know, I, I often hear some people say like, oh, I kind of feel guilty. I saw this event and I wasn't able to make it or any, any advice for well, people that think that? Don't, don't, don't feel guilty. Look, we, we do, we do events twice a month and, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> I, I, I get, trust me, I get it. Uh, and you, you can always look on our, on, on our, on our YouTube channel. That's why we put everything on the YouTube channel within a couple of days after, uh, after, after the event goes up, because we know that look, people are busy. We have them in the middle of the day. People have, you know, you know life happens, work happens. You've got to, and, and, and that's why we make it available to, to everybody, you know, re really easily so that they can look back at anything we've done over the last mm, almost two and a half years now. Um, and, 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 get, and, and get to it. Yeah. There's a whole archive there. I'm curious, like, have you seen with attendees, are there some people that I imagine there's some people that come to all of them, but I would yeah. imagine the, the, the average person is probably just coming to, they, they, they say, Oh, I'm interested in this topic and they're not interested in a bunch of the other ones. What? Um, yeah. Yeah. What it's funny. I, I just actually ran some numbers on that recently uh -huh. <laughs> that, you know, you do you do get kind of the you know the super attenders, uh, uh -huh. and, and, there, and there there are some there are, there are some of them, uh, but yeah, mo yeah, a lot of people just only attend to only register for a few, yeah. and then you know it, it's not, it's a relationship that they have with their managers where they you know what they can learn what they want to learn, and then they'll they might just look into the archive later on of of things that they might want to get at later. One of the nice things about our events um, is that. You know, we're always growing. I feel like we're always growing the community uh, of carbon removal in some way when we do our events. Something like um, looking at the at the registration list, something like twenty percent of the people in any given event are new to us in air miners, new to the whole air miners universe. You've never seen them before. These are brand new, you know, people who are who are interested in air miners events, and so or or an air or an air or in air, air miners period. So. You know, that's encouraging to me because it says, look, the pie is still growing there for, for carbon removal. This is, again, still a highly, um, uh, a, a, a highly adaptable space, a place where uh, industry where more people are joining all the time. And don't feel bashful if you're, if you're new to it. That, but that, by the way, that's one of the reasons why we have boot up. So that you can go from kind of zero to one in relatively short order, um, but you know, look, not many people have been doing this for more than call it five years, and you know, in fact, the yeah. majority of people have just been only doing it for like two or three years. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know something like that, um, and so, and, and and so it's it's a. It's, it's still a very new space, and it plays that. Yeah, way. yeah, that's it's very ac ac accepting of people who were new. And it's yeah. a, it is a learning curve, but you know, you, it's, it's also very, very digestible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's definitely something that's, that's different some, from some other industries that are kind of, you know, older, more established industries. You came from the, you know, from the biotech field. I mean, there's, there's certainly the, you know, the people that have been doing it their entire career and carbon rule doesn't, we, for better or worse, we don't have that. And we just, we kind of lean into it, right? Everybody's pretty new at this, uh, whether they like it or not. Um, and, and nobody really has it all figured out. And so these, these events are really, really powerful mechanisms for that. Um, no one has it figured out yeah. yet, I would no say. No one has it figured uh, out yet. That's a really important. Yet, yet. Really important that, and, word. you know, so, sooner or later we will. And maybe, maybe some of you watching this will. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so on that note, kind of a, a, a closing question around like, what kind of ideas or, or if people have ideas for events, how do they get in touch with you, or, or what what would you like to hear from from others from people? Yeah, I'd love to I, I, what, look yeah. if if you have new ideas for either topics of the panel events that we do. Great, I'm I'm at uh, Jason at airminers.org. That's my email address for work. Um, also, if you're an airminer Slack, you can find me. Um, also, would be super interesting too is if you have new ideas for types of events that we can hold, uh, you know, networking events or other ways of, 
again, getting people to know each other so that we can increase the uh, number of connections that people are making in the carbon removal community. Uh, you know, again, the panel events, they, they've been going really well for the last uh, for the last couple of years, and that's wonderful. But we, you know, again, full disclosure, we don't have everything all figured out all the time. Uh, you know, newsflash. Uh, so if there are new types of events, new ways of connecting that you're seeing that are apparent to you that we just are not, you know, that we have a blind spot to, hit hit us up, you know, find us, contact us. Uh, contact, you know, uh, like, like I said, uh, jason at airminers.org. That's the best way to reach me. Nice, good. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat today. It's cool to hear how you how you see events, how you see these you know, interactions between people, how you see it change over time. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to hearing about the next one and hearing ideas from people that, that have ideas for events or yeah, ideas for formats for events. That's cool. Because yeah, there's a lot more virtual stuff going on right now. I'm a huge believer in like the virtual events, virtual connections, yeah. all that sort of stuff. It means there's yeah. probably new formats that are coming up that are working that nobody knew about before yeah and, and truth be, look uh for those again for those watching kind of last thing we we want to keep the events virtual we don't see ourselves going into in-person events uh at any time soon if people want to meet up in person great yeah uh, but it, you know it but air miners really as a uh, as from an organizational strategy we want to we, we want we want to keep it as uh, just virtual events because they're so much easier to to, yeah, to, 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 or, so to, much to organize easier. oh my run. gosh it's yeah. virtual events are crazy. So I'm, I'm speaking at a, a physical event and I was talking to the organizers. So I was like, oh, we should invite this person. They would be really freaking good. And then it was like, oh wait, but it's like a month away and they would have to fly around the planet. Like that, it was just such, I was like, why would you ever do that? <laughs> I get it. There's, there is, there is value to, to in-person events. It's just, there's, there's, it's incredible being able to pull people from around the world together to share their insights yeah. And it's it's uh, 10 or 100 times more efficient than a than a physical physical event. Yeah, we have a great we have a again a, a, such a great degree of latitude in in virtual events that it makes it very easy to design something that can meet the audience's needs so that yeah, we can we can pull in people from across the uh, from across the world in different time zones. We can have a virtual event at at different times of the day. Um, so that we can accommodate people in different regions or tailor to meet people's schedules that much better if they want to, if you want to have them come to speak. So yeah, for that reason, for those reasons, that's, that's why we really want to do, we want to go with virtual and, and, and keep it virtual for the foreseeable future. So good for uh, but carbon yeah, but, emissions but, 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 too, right? Yeah, yeah. What's that? Good for carbon emissions too. Yeah. Yes, there's that. Thanks which to we our, calculate yeah. for, which we calculate for every event. And, and people buy tickets make them carbon if voluntary voluntarily they can contribute to event carbon removal and i'm happy to say that all our events have been carbon negative from the um, calculations that we do for every single event so thank you everyone yep and you can go on the um the events.airminers you have a whole spreadsheet where you track all that yeah um publicly yep. so it's events.airminers.org and there's a carbon negative events tab under events yep. series that's right that's right. So awesome. Grant helped us with that. Yeah. Okay. This one's running. We're good. Um, thanks, Jason. It's really good to to you know hear your perspective and and help you know enroll others in like yeah like what would people like to see? What's useful? What what formats are people seeing in other communities that are that are that are valuable? Uh, so thanks. All right. Thank you, Tito. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna hit stop. <laughs>